to the channel. Bit different video than I usually do. Um, obviously, as you can see, I'm out in the snow and out in some random logging road. So, like I said, bit different video. Uh, I understand that when it comes to YouTube and YouTubing, you're supposed to find your niche within the YouTube community. You're supposed to have your thumbnails all look the same. All your video content is supposed to be about the similar topic, blah, 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 blah. But I have a problem doing that personally. If you look at my videos now, obviously there's a little range of hiking, abandoned places, one video of an Airbnb, one video of me off-roading with my girlfriend Angela. But yeah, exactly. I don't want to just be in one niche. I don't want to just do abandoned videos. I don't want to just do me hiking because that'd be extremely boring if I was just hiking up a mountain all the time, filming different angles and all that. Anyways, I'm hoping that this video and that that's over there will help me further my niche, further my videos, and have more content to create by showing you this, my 2007. Peace and like So yeah, this is it. 2007 Nissan Xterra trim level X or trim level S. I honestly don't understand the difference between those two, but it is the bottom tier trim without being a two wheel, two wheel drive. It's basically just simple four by four vehicle of uh, body on frame. And all you have is two wheel drive and then four high, four low. There's no locking diff no crawl control downhill descent control none of that modernized stuff it's just basic also six-speed manual transmission yeah pretty much it so i chose to get an xterra not entirely sure why but for one toyota's forerunners tacomas all those are very overpriced at times, uh, especially where I live. Yeah, island tax on a lot of Toyotas, as well as everyone out here has Yodas. So they're just bush rigs pretty much. And if you buy, you'll spend all this money into, into buying some used one that's already beat to crap. Or you get a brand new one and you, it's too pretty. Like, you know, that, don't get me wrong, Tacomas, Gorgeous vehicle. Forerunner, gorgeous vehicle. Like brand new ones. They've, well, they've always been nice, honestly. But I don't want to get, I don't want to take that out here, pinstripe it up. I don't want to do that. So I understand when people don't do that. So I also didn't want a Jeep because I don't like Jeeps. I'm not a Jeep guy, never will be a Jeep guy. Best part about the Jeeps are, well, stock, straight axle. Obviously, that's the best part. But also, the Jeep Wave dumb but it's pretty cool anyways so i got xterra because i don't know why like i said i like them because they're underdogs like a lot a lot of things in life a lot of athletes i've looked up to when i was younger were kind of underdog athletes they weren't the, the all-star guy and same with this it's, i've never got stuck where i couldn't get out myself Taking on a lot of different trails, and it's never broken down on me. Never got stuck. Never broken down on me. And yeah, gets me where I need to go. Also, chose it because I think I'm just been a Nissan guy my whole life and never fully realized it. Like the Nissan 350Z is still one of my favorite cars ever when i see them I'm, I'm, I'm not even into that that uh car life anymore the lowered 
kind of rice rockets. I'm not really into those, but still when I see a 350Z, I'm kind of jealous. And then, you know, the old Datsuns, like 280Zs and those, and the is it 510, those are cool. And then, yeah. When I was younger, one of my buddies, his dad briefly had an Xterra. He had a first gen. First gen in the yellow they come in, which is still my favorite, with the big Xterra deck along the side. And I was 10 to 12 years old at the time, and I thought it was the coolest thing. And maybe that stuck with me, I don't know. Yeah. And then also because the stock roof rack, I like that part of Xterra's, because like, Obviously mine's been lifted a bit, bigger tires, off-road bumper, blah, blah, blah. But if you're just gonna keep a vehicle kind of stock, you just get some all-terrain tires, you can take an Xterra pretty much anywhere. And if you just wanna go camping for a night or two, you could either sleep in the back of it, like if you don't do the whole rooftop tent thing, you can sleep in the back of it, or you can bring an outdoor tent, and with that roof rack, you can just strap a bunch of stuff to the top, and I love that. I just love that, that style of vehicle, you know? Plus, I've always just liked the look of Xterra's. First gen, second gens, all of them. Honestly, out of the, there's only two generations, but out of the four different kind of looks they have, like there's the first gen, but then they get they got a facelift with like the circle headlights, so they call them like the 1.5 gen. Like those are, in my opinion, kind of two different vehicles. And then in this one, you got the 05 to 08, I think, had that grill bulges out a bit and then from 2009 to 2015 they changed it up a bit have all those four different looks honestly this is probably my least favorite just because i don't really like that bulgy grill but you know whatever the color i really liked when i got it but the longer i've had it the less i've liked it because every exterior of this generation i see has this seems to be this color and also, there's not many additions you can do to it, you know? Like different colors, pretty much you just put everything black. Anything that the rims are just plasty dipped. Black bumper, black these black accents is pretty much all you can do with this gray. Uh, other than that, it just kind of looks almost black itself. Would I get another one? I ask myself this literally almost every day I think about if this were to die this very second would I get another one and for that answer yes if it were to die right now fingers crossed knock on wood it doesn't but if it were to die right now yeah I would get another one because everything I've put into this I've had this vehicle for three years yeah July 2019 I got it before the whole COVID bug of off-roading took off and overlanding. So I've had it for three years, so everything is fairly new. This bumper has been on there just over a year. It's not too scraped up or big dents in it or anything. So I would get another one just to put that bumper back on it. Rear shocks are still good. Front shocks are fairly good. Yeah, like exactly. I'd just put everything back onto another one if I could do that but I would get the off-road package I wouldn't get the X or S trim whatever this is I'd get the off-road slash pro 4x version but down the line say this vehicle lasts me another two to five years however long I keep it for I don't know if I would get another one I do love it I do really love this vehicle but at the same time there's so many options out there. Maybe I'd be smart with my money and not do the same thing, but yeah. Something I would do different with this is not get this trim model. I would try to find an off-road one or the Pro 4X. Not necessarily have to have the manual. That's what that's clearly the main reason I got this. I was mainly looking for first gens, or more specific, the 1.5 gen, in a manual with this supercharged engine. For some reason, I was just obsessed with that for a while. Everyone told me, any of my friends that are into cars and no cars told me not to get the supercharged one. 
because it blows the engine and you have to wholly, fully rebuild it. But I didn't listen. I still want it, no matter what. But, and then I saw this for a good price. Ended up getting it because it had that manual transmission. Even though it was missing a bunch of minor things, like it didn't even have the Nissan emblem on the back. It was just, it had been stolen, ripped off the back. Uh, the shocks were all shot. It was on just shitty, it was on bad street tires. It was some kids, he owned it before me, lived up island in Tepino and once I was going through the engine, there was like little rocks everywhere because I guess he had taken it on the beach and shot a bunch of rocks into the engine area and the engine bay. So yeah, if I were to do it all over again, I get an off-road Pro 4X version. Not exactly after being manual, I could get an automatic, but I'd just make sure it had the, what's it called, the strawberry milkshake thing. I'd make sure that was taken care of and like fixed before I got it. And I would um, tight swap it, even though this is supposed to be like a budget vehicle, budget off-road vehicle. Tight and swap would cost me, I don't know, they're like two grand, but I would tight and swap it to get that more ground clearance that I want. And down travel on the suspension, a bit wider stance so you're more comfier going over stuff. Yeah. Tight and swap, off-road Pro 4X and not exactly have to be manual transmission. Those are the three things I would do differently if I were to do this over again or go back in time with this one. Cons of the vehicle and, and Nexters as a whole is gas mileage. You know, it's got a four point liter V6 gas is dumb expensive right now and gas mileage on these just isn't the best and that's what I've heard or what I've read about on why they discontinued them in 2015 is due to the gas issues and people complain blah 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 don't know if there's truth to that but that's what I've heard other cons uh prices on repairs you know <laughs> even simple repairs that I think I can do myself I look up the part I need to order and they're a lot of the time I've ran into problems where they're ridiculously priced. Uh, and then I've even checked before, like have compared it to Toyota 4Runner or something. Like I'll look up the same part for a 4Runner and it's almost half the price as it is for this. And also the first gens of these. The same parts for a first gen are almost half the price a lot of times as second gens. Third con, probably a main one, is the lack of aftermarket support, which is a love-hate situation with me. One, it's obvious con because, you know, you don't have the options like you do for Jeeps and Toyotas where you can, there's so many different rims you can choose from, so many different bumpers, and whatever, different suspension lifts, shocks, endless. There's so much aftermarket things you can get for Toyotas and Jeeps probably even another thing, something random like Fords, Dodges, I don't know. But with second gen Nissans, there really isn't, you know? I, I did so much research into these vehicles before I got this. One thing I missed, my, sorry, one thing I missed in my research was that they changed the bolt pattern for some reason from the first gen to the second gen. They're both six, six bolts, but it's, one's like six, by 4.5, the other one's 6 by 5.5. I didn't realize that, because the first gens, their bolt pattern matches that of a Toyota's bolt pattern. So I just thought, if I got an XR, instead of looking for Nissan-specific rims, if I want to get rims, I would just get some used Toyota ones off Facebook Marketplace or something, because they're so much cheaper. But instead I got this, and yeah, there's not many options out there because of this bolt pattern. <laughs> And probably the last con that I can think of right now is the uh, the ground clearance, you know? This has roughly a two inch lift with 33 inch tires and yet the ground clearance is less than a stock Tacoma. 
stock. Like, come on. So that's kind of depressing at times, but it is what it is. It's so basically to make it more off-road capable. I've just put a roughly a two inch lift in all around with 33 inch tires. And now I have that bumper, high clearance coastal off-road bumper. Not much else has been done to make it more off-road ready. Up front, I'm rocking Bill Steen, Bill Stein 6112s with their coils as well. Um, I got these because they're more supportive for having this big bumper up there and the weight that it carries. My only regret is that I didn't realize that the Bielsteins aren't a full two inch lift. They're actually, they actually only give 1.8 inches in the front, which isn't a huge deal, but at the same time, it would be nice to have at least two inches, maybe more. Then in the rear, I have Bilstein 5100s very basic, easy two inches. Well, they only give one inch in the back, but they're a very common one to get in pretty much any off-road vehicle. And then I just have a shackle extension. Like I've mentioned multiple times now, this is my coastal off-road high clearance steel bumper. Coastal off-road is based out of Delta. BC I believe which is close to Vancouver and then I've just put some cheap Amazon pods in in there in the middle these fog lights are also Amazon they're kind of darked out I like it they're not on right now obviously and then this bar was $20 from wish.com no joke next level budget overlander right there $20 and it's been great, honestly. So for the engine and performance wise, I have done nothing. Ooh, that's a bit bad. I have done really nothing to it. Uh, stock air filter. Yeah, I'm not putting a snorkel on this thing anytime soon. You can see my 10 out of 10 wiring job there for all my lights come around here yeah not much there as mentioned I got 33 inch or roughly 33 inch tires on here so they're 285 75 r16 Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax they yeah, held up well just on the stock rims there didn't feel like spending the money on rims that are hard to find in this bolt pattern so I got stock stock rims just plastic dip black and then with uh, one inch spacers all around the only things of note in the interior is I updated the stereo system here to a pioneer deck I'm not a big fan of touch screen so I got this one that has toggle for volume you have aux USB and it's also got Bluetooth. I want all the options. Got this bad boy. It was fairly cheap. And this, you know, there's no uh, heavy duty mounts out here or anything. That's just cheap. $5 mount for my phone so I can have GPS and everything. Yeah, that's about it for the interior. So, up top, in the summertime, I'll have my rooftop tent sitting just on the stock racks. But year round, I keep this Dantial Outdoor, this cheap Amazon awning on the side. It's 6.5 feet by 8 feet, I believe, or 6.5 by 6.5. It's worked great. Like I said, it was $300 on Amazon, and it's been great. Great in rain, great in snow, great in sun. In the back, pretty simple. Um, first off, these LED lights, uh, just L simple LED strips from Amazon I put in. Got this idea from a guy who has a Nextera on Instagram. I know they look kind of cheesy right now, but actually very helpful when you're camping in nighttime. This is, these are very bright. Just 
wired them straight into the dome light back here. Change the color up if you really want to. Whatever, but I like them. They're helpful. Up top here, I got a little like closet rack from Lowe's that I spray painted black that I've just bolted right into the plastic here and then hung up on the stock hangers that XRs come with. And then up here, I'd pretty much just keep toilet paper, hammock, a couple tarps, paper towel, you know, stuff that I might tarps just because you know, never know if you'll need them out here when it's raining and snowing. Hammock just because I'll always have it there in case I just go for a day trip or something, just want to throw it up. Down below, cheap, stupid. <laughs> Down below, I got this just easy put together little shelving unit thing I made. Um, yeah, below, I keep up front, there's a couple inflatables there for the rivers and lakes in the summertime. This is my tire inflator for running the air up again. Simple Canadian tire, $60, $70 one, but it works great. Spare tent in here, have battery booster pack in case battery dies on me. Got this little rollout foamy in case I'm camping and friends forget an air mattress or something. I'll toss in this. It's only like half an inch and only six feet long. So it doesn't do much, but you know, better than sleeping on the rocks. Always have water back here, some small water bottles, and then I have a jug that I always try to keep a little full in case I'm for stranded one day. And then these the Amazon special maxi tracks. They call them maxi pads. Uh, as you can see, a bunch of them are missing. Like a bunch of the uh, the little grip things have been thrown out because I ripped them out with my tires because I've actually used these a few times. So yeah, back here, it's pretty simple. Uh, plan is next summer to do a longer video walk around thing like this of my whole vehicle and by then I hope I have a bed platform back here because I have a rooftop tent that's great for when I go camping with and or something we can both be in it for two people it's great but I'd kind of like to have a bed platform back here that accordions out so like all over you see on Instagram I like to have drawer systems with like your your stove in one and then storage in the other and then have like a 12 volt overlanding fridge whatever they're called nomadic fridge right here that plugs into my vehicle that also slides out and then I want like an accordion style bed so when I lay the seats flat I can have my bed fold out just have a little mattress there foamy whatever but then I can also put the seats back up if I want to have people in the back seat and my bed folds up and just like lays on top there if that makes sense so other than that that's pretty much it for the back pretty basic that's pretty much it like I said a bit different video than I have posted on this channel but mainly just wanted to get this big pig on the channel introduce it so I can do more videos I want to do videos of me going camping and off-roading and overlanding but I want to show the rig that gets me to all those places first and yeah that's about it <sighs> thanks for watching thanks for being here let's do it again sometime destination x thanks guys